Hello, this is Jack from tofluency.com here with episode six of Ask Jack, the free series where I answer your questions about learning English and the English language. So if you have watched episodes one to five so far, then you will probably notice that I'm somewhere different today. So I've decided to come inside because it's far too bright out there and I find myself squinting into the camera. So inside, it's a lot less bright and I feel a lot more comfortable. Anyway, let's get into question one from today. Gemma from Spain asks, how can I better understand native speakers? Thank you for this question, Gemma, and for everyone else who has sent this question in. Now, being able to understand native speakers is what so many English learners want. They want to be able to watch TV shows, watch movies, have conversations, and to be able to understand what people are saying. Now, firstly, it's important to know that native speakers have problems in this area too. For example, when I watch certain movies or to talk to certain people, then there are times when I don't understand exactly what people are saying. And this can be for a number of reasons. For example, people use different expressions, they have different accents, sometimes the audio levels are quite low and it's difficult to actually hear what people are saying. So you're never going to reach a stage where you can understand everything that you hear. However, it's all a process you're going to improve if you do the right things. And the more you understand, the better it is going to be for you. So there are certain things that you can do to better understand native speakers. And obviously working on your general English, learning new words and phrases and knowing what they mean. Also improving your grammar and your knowledge of grammar is going to help you too because this means that you can actually understand the words people use, the sentence structure, and all those different things. So working on your general English is really important. But in addition to that, listening more is really going to help you. Now, what I recommend that you do is start listening to things that you can basically understand the majority of what is being said. Because this is going to help you step by step, get better with your listening. Good place to start is the news. Now the news isn't going to give you all the conversational English, but they speak in a way that's better to understand. And this helps you overcome a, a listening barrier, a barrier to, to be able to listen to English normally. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Obviously listening more is going to help. The other thing you can do as well is to work on your pronunciation because as you improve your pronunciation, your comprehension will improve as well. Because when you know how to say the sounds in English and learn about connected speech, learn about intonation and stress, then this is going to make a big difference too. But generally speaking, the key here is just to listen to English as much as possible. The more you do, the more you'll be able to understand. And if you are also improving your other skills in English too, then your comprehension is going to really increase at a fast pace. Federica from Italy asks, what's the difference between wish and hope? Thank you for this question, Federica. So the difference between wish and hope can be confusing. But let's start with wish. Now, generally speaking, we use wish when we're talking about hypothetical situations, when we want to change the current or the past situation. For example, going back to what I said before, I can say, I wish it weren't so bright today. I wish it weren't so bright today. Now, it is bright, but I want that situation to change. I'm talking, you know, I'm using my imagination and thinking what I want to change here. So it's when you want to change a, a, a situation, either in the present or in the past. 
and give you a few more examples. I can say, I wish I had more money. I don't have more money, but I want that situation to change. I wish I had more money. I can also say, I wish I had studied harder. Or just to throw in a fun example, I wish I hadn't drunk so much last night. So I had two, three glasses of wine and I can say, I wish I hadn't drunk so much last night because now I had a headache, now I have a headache. So here I want to change a past situation. Now hope is different because we use hope when we desire a certain outcome in the future. So I can say, I hope it isn't so bright later. Now, this is in the future because I'm using later and it's a desired outcome because I'm using hope. I hope it isn't so bright later. I can also say things like, I hope I have more money next year. I hope I have more money next year. And this is why I always say um, in my videos on Facebook, I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you have a great weekend. So I'll leave more examples in the show notes. So be sure to check those out. Thomas from Germany asks, what's the best way to watch movies? I don't always understand what they say. Thank you for your question, Thomas. So a lot of learners find movies difficult to understand. And that is normal because movies use complex language that is more artistic. So to, to make a certain movie work, to make it interesting and artistic, then the language has to be different. It has to be quite complex at times too. So that is why movies can be difficult to understand. And just to compare it to a television show, TV shows are easier to understand, generally speaking, because you get used to the way people speak. There's episode one, two, three, episode 24. There are five series or 10 series. So in Friends, I think there are about 240 episodes. So after watching a few episodes, they re you understand that they repeat certain words and phrases. And also you get used to their accents. You get used to the way that they speak. So movies can be really difficult to understand. But my advice for watching movies, firstly, is to choose movies that don't use as much complex language. Ones that are on simple topics with everyday English in the dialogue. Additionally, it helps to watch movies that you've already seen in your native language. Because when you do this, then you understand what is happening in a general sense. You know the story, you know the characters, and then it's a lot easier to follow. And then thirdly, I just want to say is, if you find watching movies too difficult, if they are too complex for you, then don't watch them, watch something else instead. There are so many things that you can watch in English, like my YouTube channel, or vlogs that other people make, or TV shows, documentaries, there are so many different things that you can watch in English. And if you do find it difficult, you're not going to enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, then you're going to stop doing it. So find something that you feel comfortable with, that's something that's going to be more difficult for you than, than your level, a little bit more difficult, but also something that's interesting too. My question for this video is this, what is your favorite movie? What is your favorite movie? So leave your answers in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.